Hi, welcome to the how to video series from Digital Yacht. In today's video, we're going to be looking at our WL510 long range Wi Fi product and how we can use that to connect wirelessly to a marina hotspot. So, most people um, use our WL510 with one of our iNav Connect wireless routers. So, we're going to um, show you using that configuration. So, I'm just going to check that our uh, laptop here is connected to the iNav Connect and bring up the wireless manager under Windows and there we go it is it's it's connected we can also see here an a restaurant and a marina which are two simulated uh, restaurants and marina that I've set up for the purposes of this video and those will be the ones or certainly the, in this video the marina will be the one that we'll connect to um, so we don't use the uh, Windows uh, Wi-Fi manager to connect to the marina and um, because in most cases the signal will be too weak and we need the WR510 to, to connect to it. So to connect the WR510 we use uh, a web browser and in this case we always recommend Google Chrome because it's uh, by far the, the best and most reliable um, web browser we found for this type of connection to a marina hotspot. So as you can see at the moment we've got no internet connection and that, let's imagine that we've just arrived in the marina for the first time um, and we've just moored up and we're going to connect to the to the marina Wi-Fi. So what we'll do is we'll type in 192.168.10.20 now this is the uh, standard IP address for the WL510 and as soon as we into that it will bring up the login page for the WL510 and the WL510 username and password is <laughs> funnily enough WL510 now it doesn't sound particularly secure but in reality somebody would have to get guess what the wireless network password is of the iNav connect so we much prefer that people change the password on the iNav Connect uh, and protect that and secure that rather than the WL510 because if you forget the password that you've uh, entered in the WL510 if you decide to change it then it does create problems and you have to end up opening the box to reset it which is not ideal. Okay so let's uh, we're into the WL510 I'm going to go to the wireless tab and this is where we scan for wireless networks. You see here you've got the you click the select button to do that scan. So it's now looking around the WL510 scanning all the wireless hotspots that it can detect and, and because of the strength of its um, uh, circuitry and the, the, the high gain antenna it uses that's usually quite a long list. Um, not all of them you'll be able to connect to and what I suggest is that you sort them by signal strength and you do that by clicking on the signal strength column here. Um, first time you click it it sorts it lowest to highest and that looks a bit odd because you think oh 93 that sounds good but actually it's a minus number so the smaller the better and that's a very important thing to remember so I'm going to click on that one more time and it's sorted it by um, a large or stronger signal so minus 28 is much much higher than minus 92. The signal strength uh, and the noise is the second figure there and what you're looking for is the signal's got to be at least 6 dBs really or 6 points higher than the the noise level. So the noise level is the is the surrounding sort of static and, and Wi-Fi noise that you get in in areas. And so you're always looking for the signal to be a good six um, dBs higher. Um, so let's select here the the uh, the fake marina that I've set up here. Um, now I've set this up as a captive portal, which is the type of wireless hotspot that most marinas are using now. So it appears that it's got no encryption, no password protection, which you know you think is oh that's great. Um, now what that means is yeah it's easy to connect to, so we can connect to that here. Um, we come down and we go select. Then that takes us back to the previous screen, and you see that it's got the name of the the uh, hotspot there. It's got no security, so we can just click change there. And then after a couple of seconds, we get these three new buttons. Test just does a quick test for 30 seconds so I wouldn't recommend doing that because uh, it will disconnect you after 30 seconds. Discard as if we decide oh no we don't want to connect to that that marina um, so we're going to hit apply and that's now saving those details into the WL510 and it will remember that marina next time you come back to it. So uh, it takes a, 
at the moment the WL510 is negotiating with the and if we click the main tab it actually probably won't come up straight away because it's negotiating with the hotspot um, but after a few seconds it should refresh there we go and you'll know that it's connected because you've got a good colored bar graph signal strength meter here um, we got minus 29 which is a really good signal I mean the WL510 should connect all the way down to about sort of minus 80 it starts to get uh, a bit weak at that point um, but as long as the signal is greater than the noise by that 6 dB you should be able to connect uh, it gives you an idea here of the quality so we're getting a 99.8 packet uh, success rate um, in the uh, so that means it's a very good signal um, as the signal deteriorates this this figure will go down and also the speed of the signal is always so the stronger the signal generally the the faster throughput you'll get so on weak signals you might see this drop down to sort of five or even less megabits per second but we're nicely connected here we're seeing um, some traffic on the graphs here for the the wireless LAN is the connection from the WL510 to the hotspot and the LAN is the connection from the WL510 to the iNav connect. Um, only thing that sometimes we can get caught out on is there's no rules or regulations as to what IP addresses different marinas use and so there is the slight possibility that they'll pick a IP address range that's the same as the iNav connect which is 19 2.168.1.xxx um, or the INAV, uh, or the WR510 which is 192.168.10. something. If you see that the marina has given the WR510 um, and you do that in this DHCP client area, if you see that these IP addresses look the same as that one or the 192.168.1 then you could potentially have a problem. But assuming everything's fine and it's using a different IP address range you should be connected and if the signal strength is good we should be ready to go online now what we'll do now is open a new tab and uh, we'll go to home page and now what it's doing instead of going to Google it's redirecting us to the marina's welcome page um, so this is my um, welcome page. I'm sure most marinas will be a bit bit more interesting than this with a nice picture of the marina and and uh, if yeah, they've given you a voucher code or a, a password to get in then this is usually the page where you would need to enter that. Um, now on mine it's a very simple one I just have to say I accept or I decline and then this is the barrier open now we've we've successfully connected to the internet the marina's letting us get online and so I can go to my favorite website and there we are we've got online it's going to bring up the uh, BBC page in a few seconds <laughs> there we go I thought for one nasty moment it wasn't going to bring it up then um, it's being a bit slow today for the purposes of my video, not the uh, <laughs> not the best that I wanted, but uh, there you go. So uh, we've got online, albeit a little bit slowly. Not quite sure why that's uh, decided to have a go slow. Must be the heat. Um, but there we are. So the WR510 has connected us to our marina, um, and uh, I hope you found that of interest. If you've got any further questions, please email us at support at digitalyacht.co.uk. Thanks very much for listening.